Let us say we abide in the word of God. And the word of God abides in us. We produce good fruit for the kingdom of God. The love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us now and forever. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must make it a habit to pray for our leaders in general. Hallelujah. When you pray for your leaders, you'll be showing God that you value leadership. And God is going to meet you at your point of need. The reason why some of our prayers are not answered is because we are too self-centered. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be self-centered. Hallelujah. Because if you look at the organs of your body, they all exist to serve one another. The eye does not exist for itself. It exists to see for the benefit of the whole body. The mouth exists to talk for the benefit and to eat for the benefit of the whole body. The feet, they, they would rather be swollen in order to carry the whole body around. Hallelujah. The hands, they would rather bring food to the mouth so that the whole body can survive. It's the same way God created us. Hallelujah. There is no tree which was created by God to eat its own fruits. Look at your neighbor and say, there is no tree which was created by God to eat its own fruits. Hallelujah. So it's a proverb. It simply means that you exist to serve others. I want you to confess and say, I exist to serve others. Yes, that's what purpose is all about. Purpose is never about I taking from everyone to accumulate so that I enjoy a better life, so that I live a comfortable life, so that I become richer than all of them, so that I become more famous, so that I become more celebrated. That's a sick kind of life, if you are living such a life. Hallelujah. If anyone is living such a kind of life, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mediocre kind of life. We exist to serve others. Let us confess and say we exist, we exist. To, serve to serve others. Yes, if, we, if God didn't want us to exist to serve others, you know God is very powerful. The human beings who are on earth, they are fewer than the galaxies that are in the universe. I mean galaxies, not even stars, not even solar systems. Because according to the Hubble Space Telescope, so far they've dis discovered more than 100 billion galaxies. And human beings are only 7 billion, 7 point something billion, including babies and children. Hallelujah. So it means if God wanted us to exist as individuals, so that we are not saved by anyone and we don't save anyone. Each person could have a galaxy of his, of his own. You just exist in a galaxy of your own. And you don't know why you are existing. But you will be having a galaxy to yourself. Still there will be more than 91 galaxies which will be remaining of those which have been seen. My suspicion is that the galaxies may be countless. Hallelujah. Say, I serve an awesome God. But the reason why God crammed us on this small spaceship, because the earth is a spaceship, it's actually moving at a terrific speed. Hallelujah. If you move at 140 kilometers per hour and you think you are moving fast and they are giving you tickets, you are not doing anything. The earth is moving at a speed of nearly 105,000 kilometers per hour the earth 105 more than 100,000 kilometers per hour the earth and it is carrying 7 billion passengers look at your neighbor and say it is carrying 7 billion passengers just imagine God has got his own wonder feet because the earth it's not even the earth within the galaxy of the Milky Way can't be even a wonder feet 
it will be just a small part of a wonder of it within the galaxy of the Milky Way. It's, the Earth is just a wonder of it within the solar system. It's a wonder of it within the solar system, not the galaxy of the Milky Way. Within the galaxy of the Milky Way, you can't see the Earth. You can't see the solar system. The solar system is like a particle of dust within the galaxy of the Milky Way. So if God doesn't answer your questions, your prayers and your questions very quickly, just remember how great he is. He might be preparing a great answer and you are clamoring for a small answer. Hallelujah. 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 Say I serve an awesome God. So God created us and put us to live in communities to be crowded like this so that we can serve one another. Hallelujah. That's how you become fulfilled in this life. If you want to develop a lot of sicknesses, spend much of your time thinking about yourself, thinking about your children, thinking about yourself, thinking about your children, and mostly thinking about yourself. Before you, you know it, you'll be having lots of sicknesses in your point. But if you spend time thinking about others, you will live a very long life. Look at Billy Graham. Billy Graham spent the better part of his adult life preaching. Hallelujah. And he died, when he died, he was 99 years old. Almost 100 years old. You look at a person like Kenneth E. Harkin, whom the doctors had sentenced in courts to death when he was 17 years old. And God healed and restored his deformed heart in 1934 and he preached up to 2003 and he preached for around 70 years he was preaching the gospel he, he, when he died in 2003 he had been preaching for 69 years because he started preaching he started preaching in 1934 as soon as he experienced the healing he started preaching the gospel hallelujah Amen. hallelujah you can receive your healing today. Say, I'm receiving my healing. healing. There is no one among us who has got a sick, the sickness that uh, Kenneth Hakin had. Kenneth Hakin had a very terrible sickness of a deformed heart. He was born premature, number one. Number two, he was born with a deformed heart. And with that deformed heart, he was able to serve God from 1934 up to 2003. I know he died in September 2003 because when he died, I was in Zambia attending a United Nations conference. Hallelujah. I learned about his death from ZNPC, the Zambia National Broadcasting Corporation. Hallelujah. That's how I learned that Kenneth Akin had passed away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He served God for 69 years. He refused the report of the doctors. All the doctors who were saying he was going to die within four months, they all died during his life. <laughs> when you choose to live for a cause which is greater than you, when they lift a knife against you, they will begin to argue against themselves or among themselves. You can't die. Someone who has got purpose cannot die. Hallelujah. Say, I've got a purpose. Because the moment you grab hold of purpose, which is beyond you, purpose which is higher than you, purpose which is greater than you, you begin to live like the bodies in the, in, the, in the heavenlies, like the sun. There's no one who can destroy the sun. Because to destroy the sun, you will have to destroy God who created it. It is serving a purpose. Say the sun is serving a purpose. So as Christian believers, we must discover and live for a purpose which is higher than what we are aspiring to achieve. I know we have got a lot of genuine aspirations, but I want to tell you, my brother, my sister, when you live for a cause which is higher than you, you won't die. Even if you won't die at the date when your enemies want you to die, and you won't die at the date when the devil wants you to die. There are many times when they try to kill Jesus, 
but they just couldn't kill him because he had not finished fulfilling his purpose. They only killed him when he fulfilled his purpose. Look at your neighbor and say, what purpose are you living for? Say, what purpose are you living for? And if you want to live a long life, always find a biblical, scriptural dimension of your, the purpose of your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Like Mother Teresa. You know, Mother Teresa left her country of origin. I think she was Italian. And she went to India to, to minister to the poor people in India. She left her own people. I mean, Italy is a first world country. She left her own people and lived in India among very poor people. Hallelujah. She didn't use qualifications because to, use, to serve others, you don't need an education. You just need a heart. Look at your neighbor and say to serve others. You don't need lots of qualifications. You need a heart. Say you need a heart. Say you need a heart. Say you need a heart. You saw what Econet did. I mean in Harare because of the cholera scare. I think they donated is it 10 million initially. And then later on they pledged to, to supply the piping. So that the piping, the water reticulation system is actually improved in the sewer system. And they say it will shelter the pattern. If you were caught, which company would you promote? Let us assume for one second you, you are caught. Which company would you release grace and? The company of someone who when they make a profit, they take all the profit and they do a port cruise. It's not wrong to do a port cruise all over the Indian Ocean. And then when you have finished the Indian Ocean, you go to the Pacific Ocean. And when you have finished the Pacific Ocean, you go to the Atlantic Ocean. When you come back from vacation, you have spent 1.5 million US. When your neighbors or when people in the neighborhood of Glenview where you grew up have died of cholera. And when you come from vacation trekking your pegs, you ask, where is Ningi? They tell you, ah, she passed away because of cholera. You say, ah, I'm sorry. The, 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 the government must improve the situation. This government is selfish. But what is the government? Look at your neighbor and say, what is the government? What is the government? Say, what is the government? What is the government? Because without you and I, the government does not exist. Because what you, you're talking about as the government is people who are now cooking at home. It's people who are like, like yourself and myself. It's human beings like yourself and myself. Hallelujah. What you, you can't and what you don't do to others, don't expect others to do to, to you or to others. Hallelujah. It's wrong for me to expect others to give when I'm not giving. Or to, for me to expect others to love when I'm not loving. My expectation of giving must be demonstrated by the giving itself. My expectation of love must be demonstrated by love itself. Hallelujah. You can't say the reason why I stopped loving him or why I stopped loving her is because she didn't show any love. She didn't love me. Because if you love a person, even if they, 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 they can't love, they will end up learning to love. Hallelujah. They will end up learning to love. If Jesus Christ could love Saul, who was hunting and killing his disciples, who can't love? Jesus Christ came and, uh, you know, he pinched Saul. He didn't kill him. He just never him and pinned because killing, he could have killed him without soul seeing anything. He could have just collapsed and fell from the horse. I believe they were on horses. Hallelujah. It's not written in the Bible. He could have just collapsed. But Jesus Christ, you know, dealt with him nicely. He pinched him. Just nicely for three days, he was pinched. Jesus Christ pinched him took away his eyesight, which was causing him to be arrogant for three days. 
and three nights he had no eyesight. Say no eyesight. The eyes were there, but there was no sight, the sight part of the eyes. Look at your neighbor and say, to your eyes, do you have the sight part of eyesight? Hallelujah. So we thank God for, for Jesus. Because Jesus Christ is both a giver and a lover. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. As Christian believers, our commission is the same as the commission of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us go to John chapter uh, 8. John chapter 8. After that, I'll read from Romans. John chapter 8, verse 12. John 8, verse 12. It says, When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So when we follow Jesus Christ, we won't walk in darkness, we will have the light of life. But what did Jesus Christ do? Let us go to John chapter 3, verse 16. It says in verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his own, only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Say, I've got eternal life. Say, I've got eternal life. It says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Say, I am served by the glory of God. If you have got a problem of kidneys, just to touch your back. If you experience pain by the sight of your spinal cord, which you suspect to be kidney-related problems, just to touch your back, I want to pray for you. Father, in the might, let us all pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray for healing. We release healing about this kidney-related problem. We say, God, may you move by your spirit and by your anointing. May you release your grace. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I want to show you something. You know, there is a, a very strong link between healing and the word of knowledge. Hallelujah. And the word of knowledge. And the way God operates... He operates in waves because God is a spirit. He's not a physical like ourselves. The reason why we do things chronological, it's actually two reasons. The first thing which causes us to do things step by step is because we are fallen as human beings. We are not living by revelation. When man plunged into sin, he was cut off from the revelation knowledge of God. That's reason number one. Hallelujah. And the other reason is that we are in a physical world where things are done step by step. Even if you want to do things supernatural, you still have to walk step by step. Hallelujah. So it sort of interferes with the, the spontaneity which is necessary when you are walking by, this, by faith. Because when you are walking by faith, God can interrupt your own program. Hallelujah. Say God is going to interrupt my own program. In Jesus, mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. There was a day when I didn't have rent. And then I, I went to the mountain, that mountain near Nketa 7, to pray. I didn't have rent, and uh, they'd been asking for rent for two days. And, you know, it came to a point where I would arrive at my lodging place at around 9 or after 9, just to hide that I, I, I didn't have their rent. And then when I was praying, 
you know you pray to the point of almost crying because you won't be knowing where the solution will come from. When I was praying, the Holy Spirit kept on saying, go to town. I said, how do I go to town? I did, don't even have money to go to town. And then, I, you know, when the Holy Spirit was speaking, I kept on looking at my feet. I don't know why I was looking at my feet, yet it's the Holy Spirit who was answering me that you may not have money to, to put a comb or something, but you have got your feet, you can put your feet to town. Look at your neighbor and say you can put your feet to town. <laughs> when push comes to shove, you can put your feet to town. So eventually I listened to the Holy Spirit and moved from that mountain to town without any agenda. I was just following the Holy Spirit. And then when I was near the main post office there, I met a certain friend, an old friend of mine. You know, he asked me, what, what are you doing? And then there was a peace shop somewhere where they needed people to train others yeah, about peer education and so on. It was, it was more of me training as well. And when I attended to that, I received an equivalent of two months salary for a teacher during that time. <laughs> Hallelujah. But if I had not listened to the Holy Spirit and put at my feet to town, I was going to suffer, I mean, without rent. Hallelujah. You see how God operates. So if I had ignored that word, it was, that one was not a word of knowledge, it was a word of wisdom. When the Holy, when the Holy Spirit kept on, because there was this statement in my heart, which was saying, go to town. And then I would think of many other things, and then there would be just a sentence which would be saying, go to town. You, I could almost hear that there is someone, or that time I was saying something. There was something which was saying, go to town. And then I was like ignoring it. But then later on I yielded to that. And then when I went to town, lo and behold, it opened a door to me. Hallelujah. And in town there, I wanted to move by a certain street, but that same voice was like I'm being directed, you know, because I moved from, from Sizinda to NRZ, from there to Foot for Less, and then moved near Hyper, near where people buy their chicken in stuff. I couldn't buy anything because I had no man. So I had to just follow the Holy Spirit. Just to stroll around town. Say, just to stroll around town. Just to stroll around town. Say, just. <laughs> there is a time when you expect someone to give you a solution and they are not there. And you have to rely on the Holy Spirit. I was once at that point where there was no job, where relatives, they were there and they would tell you stories. Before you even ask, they will be seeing from your face that here is a request. <laughs> Immediately after they finish greeting you, they will explain to you the problems which are more huge than your own problems, financial problems which they are going through. And you would think, no, if I pick money from the street, I would actually give to them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So... That's how I learned to, to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. When I was desperate. Hallelujah. When I was desperate. And you are not desperate until you have tried all sorts of little things. Which you think are, they are going to help you. When, when you have moved around like the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible, the, I like how the old King James Version puts it. It said she had suffered many things of many physicians. It's old English, Shakespearean English. It says she had suffered many things of many physicians. It means she had lost a lot to many physicians. Each physician would come up with a new scientific name for her sickness and a prognosis or a diagnosis which would be longer than an essay. But at the end of the day, there would be no what? Solution. Until she created a solution by the Holy Spirit in her heart. She didn't wait to be taught because she was not allowed by the law of Moses 
to go where there was a church gathering. So she had to violate the law of Moses to receive her healing. That woman was living under the law of Moses. But if she had continued under the law of Moses, she was going to bleed to death under that law of Moses. So she had to temporarily come out of the law of Moses. Temporarily violate the law of Moses by faith. Say the just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. Say the just shall live by her faith. You know, these words of knowledge, I enjoy them sometimes, the way they operate. There was a time when our church, it just started. Uh, when we had just started the church, they, delay, they delayed in paying us a salary. And then the Holy Spirit told me when I was praying at the mountain, because I used to go a lot to the physical mountain, where the Vapostory and other people, Zion, Zion people, where they pray. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit told me, when you collect an offering, uh, just take all of the offering and multiply it twice. The money which you have saved in your house, add it to the offering and give it to so and so. And I was thinking in my mind, this person has got more money than myself. And I'm renting almost one room because the two rooms, they were almost one room. They were almost two rooms. Hallelujah. And then when I collected that money and added a bit of what I had saved and gave it to that lady who had a, a serious problem which I didn't know of, she started crying. Hallelujah. She started crying. What, what I gave her was equivalent to what she owed. But I didn't know, you see. I just listened to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I just listened to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And everything which the Holy Spirit tells us is meant to bless us. Whatever the Holy Spirit will tell you, it is actually meant to bless you. Even if the Holy Spirit says, carry someone and push them with a wheelbarrow to mnyor, he's actually doing it for your own sake. He's actually doing it for your own sake. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at Simon of Cyrene. Who was going to know him if he had not carried the cross for Jesus? And the, 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 you know the Bible scholars, they tell us that his sons, Rufus and Alexander, they became very great apostles in Egypt, in ancient Egypt and parts of Libya. It's not there in the script, but the sons of Simon of Cyrene, they, 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 became, they became very great and eminent apostles. Because when, when their father carried the, just imagine the honor of carrying the cross, cross of Christ. He's the only man who did that. Jesus Christ said, if any man would follow me, let him carry his cross come and follow me. But Jesus Christ, he was so tired, so emotionally trained, so spiritually trained because of the pain and the humiliation that he had undergone. And I don't think he was eating anything. So he was naturally, you know, depleted in terms of physical strength in his physical point. And when he tried to carry the, he had been abused as well. He was wounded for our transgressions. Say he was wounded for, for our transgressions. Say by his stripes we are healed. Stripes, it means they were beating him. And what they were using to pity him, it's very difficult to imagine. It's a whip which has got iron balls and the bones of a sheep. Bones of a sheep or other, another animal. So when the iron balls hit you, they sort of disintegrate your flesh. And then the bones, they hook the flesh out. Hallelujah. That's the whip that they were using to beat Jesus. So when we say by his stripes, we are healed. We are meaning the wounds which were created by that. By such a kind of a whip. Hallelujah. 
he underwent enormous pain for our justification. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we thank God for Jesus Christ because he never lived a life which was self-centered. Yes. Say from now onwards, from now onwards I, will not live a life which is self I will not live a life which is self-centered. I will live to serve others. To serve others. That's what being a believer is all about. If you want God to use you, begin to love others. Even those that are very difficult to love, just love them with the love of God. Hallelujah. And love is not even an emotion. It's a decision. Say love is a decision. If your love is an emotion, it means it will be always fluctuating like the exchange rate. It will always fluctuate like the exchange rate. Say like the exchange rate. Say like the exchange rate. Yes, our love should be a decision. That's how you distinguish a person who is disciplined and a person who is undisciplined. A person who makes, who does most of their things based on emotions, they are undisciplined. A person who is disciplined, they make their decisions on the basis of purpose, not emotions. Hallelujah. Emotions can join along. I may be feeling tired when God is telling me to go and witness in a certain area, to go and preach the gospel in a certain area, but I will go nevertheless. Because the scripture says, let the weak say, I am strong. Look at your neighbor and say, let the weak say, I am strong. Say, I'm a believer in Christ Jesus. Say, I am a believer in Christ Jesus. Say, in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Say I, am a I am a believer. Someone may be, might be saying, all that I need is a financial breakthrough. All that I need is money, 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 money. If all that you need is money, then you have got a very big problem. Hallelujah. I don't think you need money. There is no one among us who needs money here. Hallelujah. <laughs> the reason why I'm laughing is because I can sense it in my, in my spirit that people are contradicting me. Some are saying, but I need man. How can you say I don't need man? I will show you the answer. What do you need the money for? Because I teach economics myself, I know you don't really need money. Hallelujah. If you need money, what for? It means your need for money is intermediate for a certain final need. Do you realize? Someone will say, but I need money to buy tablets. No, what you need is healing. It's not money. <laughs> because even if you eat one million tablets, if there is no healing, you, you develop four other sicknesses, trying to solve one small sickness. You will develop four giants of sickness. Someone will say, I need money to buy food. No, what you need is food. There are people who eat food without money. In prison, you know, especially in American prisons, they, they eat better meals than yourself without money. <laughs> Hallelujah. Someone will say, ah, but I need money to pay for accommodation. Do you know that there are people who are now gray headed who have never paid for accommodation? Some they stopped paying for accommodation a long time ago. You talk of government officials, they don't know what rent is. You talk of rent, they will be thinking, rent, what is it? Let me check the legislation, what rent is. <laughs> Do you think someone who became a, a, a government minister in 1908 really knows what to pay rent is? 
They are living for something which is far much higher than these needs at the bottom of the pyramid of, of Maslow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What you need is not money. That's why people end up killing other people for nothing and you end up missing heaven over nothing and money cannot take you to heaven. Hallelujah. What you need is for God to solve those needs that you have. And God has got many ways. He can, he, he can decide he will give you money to solve those needs. He can send people to solve those needs for you. What we need in this world is not more money, but what we need is more love. Do you know that money to eradicate cholera in Arara is there? There may be one person who is actually sitting on top of maybe even 100 million in a Swiss account. That man is just seated in there. They fly, they will be having a, a holiday in Switzerland. Then. They will act as if they are having a holiday in Switzerland. When the fellow is going to check his monies in the Swiss account. In the meantime, a few kilometers away, people will be dying at Budiriro of cholera. When someone is sitting on 100 million. 100 million US. And they will be saying... The problem is that the government does not revamp infrastructure. No, the problem is that you don't have love. That's why you are sitting on top of 100 million. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you know, I, I was reading this interesting article that the money which women use in, in Europe to fix their hair, it can finance education in Africa four times. The money which women use just on, on their head, <laughs> on their head, in Europe. It can finance education four times in Africa. Just to fix their hair. And those people, I think you would almost agree with me that there is little or nothing to improve on their hair. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then the money which they eat on ice cream, on ice cream and other dandies, they say it can finance the health budget of Africa in Europe, which they spend, I mean, on ice cream, pudding and other funny things, which are actually threaten health in Europe. I'm not talking about America. It's worse in America. If you go to America, you see a person, no matter how long the shirt is, the stomach will be protruding. <laughs> you see a person who will be fighting a pizza, the pizza will be like, <laughs> literally. The person will be sweating, occasionally looking at others. Hallelujah. And then they develop all sorts of sicknesses. They'll be going to the Oprah Winfrey show to say, you know, people don't care about me. They say I'm big. But you are already big. What do you want them to say? Hallelujah. Because whilst they are thin in, is it in Somalia and Ethiopia and other countries, and Yemen and other countries, people are dying of obesity in other countries. So the problem is not lack of resources on earth, it's lack of proper distribution of love. There's too much self-love in our generation. Look at your neighbor and say you are the salt of the earth. And you know love, the love that I'm talking about. Because in many churches they say, yes, you know, you have to have faith. Without faith, you cannot please God. Yes, they quote many scriptures. But there is something which they neglect, love. Because faith cannot work when there is no love. If you try to use faith in the absence of love, it will be reduced to formulas. It will be reduced to reciting scriptures. Hey, Father, you say it in your word that you will make us rich, that Jesus became poor so that we can be rich. But what is motivating you to say that? 
Are you motivated by love that when you prosper materially, you want to minister to others? What is your motivation? Because whilst faith is the activator, love is the motivator. Say love is the motivator. Because the devil can also recite scriptures as well. Do you know that both court and the devil, they perform signs and wonders? But what is different, the reason why the signs and wonders of the devil are called magic, it's because of the motive. The reason why the signs and wonders of God are called miracles, is because of the motive. The supernatural acts of God, the devil can actually give a person a job. But the motive will be to put that person in bondage. But when God gives you a job, it's for the salvation of your soul. When God gives you your healing, it's for the salvation of your soul. When God gives you your marriage, it's for the salvation of your soul. When God gives you a promotion at work, it's for the salvation of your soul. When God gives you a house, it's for the salvation of your soul. When God gives you a trip to the United States of America, it's for the salvation of your soul. When God gives you a senior position in the community or in the country, it's for the salvation of your soul soul. Whatever the devil is doing, it's so that he can steal your soul. Both God and the devil, they can give you whatever you want, but for different motives. Hallelujah. So God sent me to tell us as believers that we should not run after things. If your faith has not been working for so many years, you have been faithing for something and it is not working, Start to do a work of developing love within your heart. Someone will say, but I'm already full of love. No. You can never be full of love. Hallelujah. Have you done what the, the good Samaritan did? The good Samaritan. You know the story of the good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10. Hallelujah. It's a story of love. Hallelujah. Maybe we need to review that story before I conclude. And then I'll read from Romans chapter 8. And then a bit from Romans chapter 10. It says in Luke chapter 10. Luke 10. It says... In verse 25, on one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. You see that the greatest commandment is the commandment of love. Do you realize? It says almost nothing about faith. Have you ever realized that among all the commandments, there is no commandment about faith? Have you ever realized that? Do you know why? Because the moment you have the love of God in your heart, faith will begin to occur within you spontaneously. Anyone who has the love of God, they will automatically develop faith. Love within them, the love of God within them, will produce faith. But if you try to have faith without love, that faith will degenerate to works. It will degenerate to self righteousness It will degenerate to comparing yourself to others. Because you don't have love. If you have got love, you won't compare yourself to others because you'll know that they've got certain strengths which you do not have. So it's futile to compare yourself to others. Hallelujah. Because even the person with whom you think is useless, they can contribute something to you. Hallelujah. They can contribute something to you. Say they can contribute something to you. 
Say they can contribute something to you. Say they can contribute something to you. Say they can contribute something to you. Say they can contribute something to you. Hallelujah. 29. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Look at your neighbor and say, who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. When he fell into the hands of robbers, they stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. Say half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. Say priest, priest, priest. He was a priest, he just symbolizes you and I. We who claim to be Christians. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> he was saying, no, I'm late for the service. I'm late for the prayer meeting. Let me rush, you know, this, this armed robbers, the police should do something about the situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So to a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him passed by on the other side, just imagine the priest and the Levite, they passed by on the other side. Hallelujah. And this person was highly likely to be a Jew because he was moving from Jerusalem to Jericho. We know Jerusalem was also frequented by Gentiles. But the, according to the way Jesus crafted the story, the person who fell among thieves was highly likely to be a Jew. Hallelujah. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. I want you to realize the narrative now. Because the size of your heart also explains the size of your means. If your heart is stingy, your heart, the circle of your heart is just around yourself. Your resources will be enough for yourself. Usually they won't be enough for yourself. Hallelujah. The more you desire to touch people, the more God gives you resources. Hallelujah. Because you will now be hands, eyes, legs, mouth, ears, heart for God. Because God, when God wants to act on earth, but he doesn't have a body of his own. He's looking for your body. And the devil is also looking for bodies to use. These people who do witchcraft, they are bodies that just yield themselves to the devil. The people who do prostitution, it's the devil will be looking for bodies to use. The spirits of prostitution. These are spirits, they don't have sex organs, but they desire so badly to be involved in sexual activity. So they will look at people who are willing vessels to be taken upon so that they can use them. And God also wants to use us. He also wants a pot with which to express his infinite love. If he can find a, such a pot, he will begin to, to, to supply that pot, that person, with the resources. Because the more you touch people, the more resources come to you. Because they are coming from God. Hallelujah. Before you know it, you will be able to touch the whole world. And God will give you the grace to do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to check what the Samaritan had. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came, to, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds. So he had a bandage. A bandage for others. Because he was not injured himself. So he went around carrying what? Bandages. 
So he anticipated that since he lives in a, in a sinful world, where there are thieves, where there are people who are murderers, or where people maybe they can fall into an accident, he may need to bandage them. He moved around carrying bandages. Say carrying bandages. Say for others. for others. Pouring on oil. He had oil. Say oil. oil. Oil symbolizes the anointing. Bandage, it symbolizes cover. It symbolizes resources to cover others. Oil, it symbolizes the anointing or the divine energy of God. The bandage, it symbolizes resources to cover others so that they are not vulnerable. God will give you those resources in as much as you are listening to this sermon. There are many people who try to form an organization and deep, deep, deep in their heart they wanted to make money but they were lying that they want to serve the underprivileged. And because God deep sees deep, 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 deep. He said, no, let us sort out deep, 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 deep. Because if I bring money when deep, 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 it's like this. The money will be wiped out. It will be eaten. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So someone was saying, but pastor, we fasted. Why did not money for my organization come? But when we were fasting, what was in your heart? Was it love or it was the profit motive? Look at your neighbor and say, was it love? Or it was the profit motive? And wine, and pouring on oil and wine. Just imagine, this person, there were no medicines during that time. So he went around carrying wine. I'm not saying we should buy wine and oil because we'll end up drinking it. So that you can pour it on people's wounds. Nowadays there is medicine. So you don't need to buy whatever wine from the shop to pour on people's wounds. It will be illegal in any case. Hallelujah. Wine, it symbolized the healing. In that story, it symbolized the healing. Because wine, it symbolizes a certain dimension of the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Wine symbolized the healing. Oil symbolized the anointing, the presence of the Holy Spirit. Then he put the man on his own donkey. Say donkey. This man had a lot of resources. The Levites is just chang and yaupe. Small heart, small resources. Just the sandals. Small heart, small resources. <laughs> Small art, small. Small heart pumps. All the way. I, I'm not saying if you are wearing pumps, you have got a small heart. I'm just <laughs> driving home a point. Hallelujah. You will be wondering why Shepard Pushiri has got the planes. But this other time I was watching him on YouTube. He went to an orphanage, changed the betting in an orphanage. You may criticize him for all you want, but there are people who don't want Shepherd Bushiri to run out of man. You know nurses were crying in this children's home in South Africa. They were crying. He went there and then trucks started arriving with food, with clothing, with new blankets. He's a solution. He's a Malawian. He's in South Africa, but he's making a what? A difference. So he actually needs a plane to move around because the earth is big for someone with a big heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why would you need a plane yourself? Look at the size of your heart and who touches you. Why would you need a plane? Because the plane will always be parked at your home or at, 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 at the airport. It will be just a profile picture that you will be going on Fridays to take and put on Instagram. The plane won't be doing anything. If it is God who is putting something in your hands, he will not put something which you won't use for the benefit of others. 
Ah, because if God puts a lot for your own benefit, you end up becoming like Satan. According to the book of Ezekiel, I think it's chapter 28, he had a lot, perfection and beauty. They were, they, he had stones and these things, they caused him to be self-centered and now he wants to be worshipped by everyone. Which is the opposite of what I'm teaching. Say small heart, small resources. This is the Levite. Say small heart, small resources. This is the priest. And these, you know the Levites and the priests, these are people who actually composed most of the Psalms. So I'm quite sure that those two guys, they were actually singing. Maybe Psalm chapter 23, on their way to church, but small heart, small resources. And then there is a Samaritan who doesn't even know a single stanza from the book of Psalms, but who has got the stanza of love in his heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Look at the resources that he had. He had wine that he didn't need to drink. Just imagine if you have got enough, they were allowed to drink wine during that time in moderation. Just imagine if you have got enough wine to be pouring on people's wounds as you are traveling from one place to another. You'll be having a lot of wine, my brother. Wine to pour on people's wounds. You'll be... <laughs> Hallelujah. If you can have wine to see a person who has been beaten and left half dead, just much, it means he poured the wine all over the pot. Because this man didn't have one wound. He was beaten by thieves and left half dead. And he took his wine and poured it on him. And the oil. And the wounds were many yet enough bandages to bandage this. And let us continue with the story of love. So that I conclude. Hallelujah. Then he put him on his own donkey, took him to an inn or a hotel. Say an inn. And took care of him. The next day he took out two, piece, two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him. He said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of thieves? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. The, the expert, this scribe, the expert in the law, didn't even want to mention that the Samaritan. <laughs> Because Jesus Christ was actually piercing. These people were self-centered. These, these, these experts at the law. They were too self-centered. So Jesus was indirectly taking a dig at the, at the person. He was preaching a sermon to, to, to the lawyer. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Look at your neighbor and say, go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. And when you do like this good Samaritan, you will start to have the resources that he had. Just imagine someone who can book a hotel for a stranger. It means wherever they are going, they can easily book a hotel. Because God will not give you resources to, to book a hotel for a stranger and then you can't book for your own family. Hallelujah. Love. Say love. Say love. Say love. love. Romans 8. As I conclude. Say love. love. 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 Romans 8 verse 14. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. And when the Holy Spirit is truly leading you, you will love others. Hallelujah. You will love others. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 10. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified and it is with your mouth that you confess 
and are saved. So belief is not something which comes from our heads. It has to come from our heart. But for proper belief to spring from our hearts, there must be love first in our hearts. If your belief has not been working, check the lavometer inside your heart. It might be written zero. It might be written zero. Because even the, some people, the, the amazing thing, even those whom they love, they actually hate. Even those that are closest to them, they actually hate. And it's a civil war wherever they go. There is a saying which I saw about marriage, which was saying the most terrible form of war is where you have to sleep with your enemy. <laughs> and such sayings are possible because we live in a world where love is not emphasized. The most successful people on Forbes are people with empty hearts and billions of US dollars. Empty hearts and billions of US dollars. We have got mansions which are useless. The kids, they don't even live there. They are elsewhere in the world and the mansions are full of strangers and the person will be feeling important with billions locked all over the place. Hallelujah. I would rather have a big heart and enough resources to minister to my fellow human beings in my generation before I exit this life. Because as surely as we came naked to this world, we will not take anything out of this world. Whatever you are accumulating in this life is for serving others with eternity in perspective. But if you don't have love in your heart, you will act like you will drag these things into the grave. And when you are just about to exit this life, you are racha good. When others just fall asleep, when death has come to collect them so that they go to glory, they just say, bye bye, I'm, I'm going home. I'm going home. And you will be racha as a Christian. In Jesus' name, I, I bind the spirit of death. No, my brother, my sister, you love the things of this world. Like Lord's wife who became a pillar of salt. <laughs> Hallelujah. <Amen>. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. God sent me with a very simple message. There must be an environment of love within your heart for prayers to for your prayers to work. Hallelujah. If you want to be a millionaire, why do you want to be a millionaire? Why? Because there must be a reason or a purpose to whatever you want. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone would say, I want to live on a, on a double, but why? On a double story house. But why? In that house where you live, do you entertain visitors? But the Bible says in the book of, is it Hebrews? Where it says we must not forget to entertain strangers. In case we end up entertaining angels like what Abraham did. Hallelujah. The reason why Abraham was very wealthy is because he had a big heart. When his nephew was captured with the other people who were associated with the Lord, Abraham organized 300 men from his household. Just imagine someone with a household who just got 300 men. 300 trained men. Abraham had a militia of his own because of the size of his heart. What will give you a militia if you, if you need one? It doesn't need to give you direct. He can turn the ZRP to be your personal militia if you have got a big heart for loving others. I'm saying personal militia in courts, not literally. Because people will then quote me out of context and say it is a therapy can be a personal militia. No, 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 no. 
I'm saying it as a figure of speech. Hallelujah. God can give you so much grace that in all of your meetings you will see the Zetara people just coming to, to look after your meetings, to look after people in your meetings because you will be touching so many people in your organization. So this is the message that God is giving us as believers. That you are not a believer until you are working in love. Look at your neighbor and say, let love lead. In every decision that you make. Yes, the reason why we see less miracles in our generation is because there is no love. People want to perform miracles to put them on YouTube. So that the man of God, when he comes, he will be saying, I am the whatever, maybe interpreter, I'm the mighty one, I'm the whatever. Nowadays, there are so many adjectives and adverbs which they give, give themselves. If we had love, God would easily release miracles. It's not a problem because whatever God does is a miracle. He doesn't need to copy anyone or to copy anything. But the reason why there are less miracles is because there is less love. Let us cultivate more love. We will begin to see a lot of miracles. Let us stand in the presence of God.